Yo YouTube, what is up? Welcome to the extended review of the Holly Davidson Pan America featuring three things we love, three things we don't like about the Pan America. We are down in Morocco and have taken this bike for an extensive cruising through the desert for a solid week. I'm here with my associate, Donkeyman41. And uh, we have been putting the Pan America through its paces over all manner of terrain, altitude, road conditions. It has been hot, it has been cold. Morocco is throwing everything at these bikes. And they're still going. So let's dive into it. Uh, number one, the thing we love about this bike, we love, uh, we love that it rips. The engine is a solid block. Uh, the open highways here are pretty close to uh, the kind of roads you're going to find out in uh, Utah, Texas. Okay, the highways are going to be smaller than the western <coughs> part of the US, but you're going to find yourself on pretty desolate desert roads. And uh, you're able to open this thing up and it really goes. Straight line movement on this thing is good. Second thing we love about this. The uh, all day riding comfort. We've been putting some 12 hour days on the saddle and uh, the seats really hold up all day. It doesn't look like it. The seats look pretty minimalist in design and the shape is not very sculpted. Uh, but it really functions well. Um, the ergonomics of the of the uh, seat, uh, the foot bags may not be the best, but in terms of actual seat comfort, uh, you are going to be pretty good. And um, third thing we like about this chassis and uh, overall package is for a big 1200 cc engine bike that weighs uh, maybe I think it's like 240 kilos plus um, the uh, low speed maneuvering is uh, extremely good it's very well balanced for a bike of this uh, height and size uh, the steering lock the turning lock of the uh, of the bars is uh, is massive uh, in fact it's so big that uh, it uh, bashes into the screen if you turn the bars too far um, it feels like it could probably go further uh, but it's really helpful if you're in uh, an urban environment and uh, you need to do a proper u-turn something like that um, low speed maneuvering on road off road it has a good balanced chassis and uh, yeah, those are, those are some of the key things we like. As I said, if you're in a straight line and you're on the open highway, this thing is really a comfortable cruiser. So yeah, got to hand it to Harley there. They, this is the first edition, uh, not special Pan America, the basic version that we're riding. So we're really able to just focus on the core aspects of the motorcycle and what it does well. What do you expect from a motorcycle? You know, we haven't played around too much with the uh, all the functionality, but um, but yeah, good job on that. Over to the things that we uh, we don't like. Donkey man, what do you think? You've been navigating us across the desert, and you've yeah. had some time to get to know the sat nav and yeah. the infotainment. Yeah, so the the the, the entertainment system is is very buggy. Um, and in particular, the sat nav doesn't work very well. Um, my main issues are sometimes the app on the phone crashes. Um, and so my, my phone is a, an Android Galaxy S23. So that, that's a, uh, you know, a flagship model of a major brand. And despite that, the app will crash several times a day. Um, so I assume it, it will get worse on, on phones that are not flagship. 
And when the when the sat nav crashes on the phone, um, the 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 sat nav on the bike basically gets frozen. Uh, so it might tell you to go straight uh, because you haven't realized that actually you should not go straight. It's just that the sat nav is is uh, is not blocked. There's also a lot of issues with connectivity in the sense that uh, if you lose connection with your phone, if the Bluetooth connection gets interrupted, uh, the phone and the sat nav have issues reconnecting and I, I often find myself uh, having to just turn up, turn up the bike, switch off the app and reconnect. So I think Harley needs to do more testing um, on both the app and the bike in conditions in which connectivity is patchy. Uh, both between Bluetooth and, um, you know, with, with the 5G network. Right, right. Now, the, the last thing that doesn't work well uh, is, for example, we, we had a destination that was five hours away, and the SATNAV could not figure out how to get to the actual final destination. And instead of giving us an approximation of the route we should take for the first five hours, the SATNAV just uh, tries to compute it for ten minutes, and then just outright refuses to give us any sort of direction. Which is a bit of a problem on an adventure bike because you might find yourself going into remote places uh, pretty often. And, you know, because the sat nav can't figure out the last 10 minutes of the trip, um, you know, we still would like to be able to figure out, um, you know, the previous four and a half hours. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It, when we started the trip, we were in urban environments and it, it seemed like it worked quite well in... Uh, starting from an urban center but uh, as we move to more remote areas and right now we're kind of skirting the Sahara um, it, uh, it struggled more and more but yeah so in a nutshell that's my review of the entertainment system and stuff now hey I lost you, lost you for a sec hang on which way did you go from the roundabout left left okay hang on Yeah, I got you. Hang on a sec. Um, so, yeah. So, not the Harley Infotainment sat nav, not without its problems. Um, I think for, for real adventuring, for someone who's planning, um, you know, some globe trotting. Um, it's probably not a system you want to rely on because it starts to struggle in more remote regions. And yeah, we are on, we are in pretty remote area, uh, but we're not without, you know, telco connection. Um, we're not off the grid, so the sat nav should, you know, really be uh, functional. Just thinking about the competition, I don't think any of the other major players uh, provide built-in sat-nav on their adventure models actually um, so maybe it was quite ambitious I think all of them u use a either a turn-by-turn -turn connectivity or um, they have a, a kind of mount ready accessory for a sat-nav unit which they might sell separately and doesn't integrate directly with the with the dash, as far as I know, I can't think of any other any other manufacturers that integrate it directly. I'm not sure about the Africa Twin, but I don't know. I don't think Triumph or BMW combine sat nav into the into the dash. So yeah, I mean it's a pretty ambitious move in that context. Uh, but some things to iron out. The uh, other thing we didn't like is the bike is too tall, as standard. Uh, Donkey man, you're pushing what? 6'1", 6'2"? Oh uh, yeah, 6'1". 6'1". 6'1". and it's it slightly too tall for me. It, it, it's, uh, it's one of the first times in my life that I actually find a stock bike too tall for me. In case you're wondering why he's called Donkey Man, you're absolutely right. It's uh, to do with his off-road motorcycle capabilities and his ability to balance a lot of luggage on his bike. Yeah, so the bike is too tall. Oh shit, 
<laughs> yep. The bike is a bit tall. Um, yeah, the other thing we really didn't like, this is a big problem um, for an adventure bike, is the, uh, the gearbox has a, has a neutral finding problem. Uh, it might be these models that we're, uh, that we're on uh, need a bit of a service check, but the, uh, the gearbox has a problem finding neutral, and particularly when you're on any sort of incline. I don't know if this is deliberate or what, but if we stop on a hill uh, or something like that, uh, neutral is a challenge. Um, which is a big problem. Um, it's also uh, it's also surprisingly sluggish in some gears. I think my experience was the uh, the even gears uh, seem to be lackluster. The odd number gears are where you really uh, do a lot of your riding so I particularly found that second and fourth are quite weak uh, and then as you do a lot of your riding in third and fifth uh, the, the gearing of the of the bike could be probably refined um, right now I'm in fifth and fifth, fifth is where we've done a lot of our cruising uh, Sixth as well, it's it's really an overdrive gear. It's not really gonna do much, uh, you're not gonna get a lot of pull out of the engine at that point. Uh, it's just a cruising gear for fuel economy, really. Um, so yeah, you, you really wanna be in the, in the odd number gears. Um, so yeah. Uh, we did a little bit of off-roading. Uh, tested the bike's off-road capabilities uh, again this is I mean you're probably not going to be doing serious off-roading this because why would you it's a 240 kilogram uh, adventure bike with a high center of gravity this is really not the thing you want to do um, and despite the fact that we uh, do not have nobilies on the wheels uh, we did a bit of light off-roading and actually the bikes held up very well the low speed torque does a uh, does wonders when you get uh, onto a onto a steep incline um, and you need to rev it out. Um, yeah, performed well. So that is a wrap. That is what we think. Uh, would we buy? Uh, I think it, it presents good value for its class. It's a it's a good it's a good package. Uh, considering it comes in a little bit less than the competition. But I think overall it has it has too many rough edges. I think this is like probably the first model year version that we're riding, so um, we'd have to see against uh, the later editions. I think with a bit of refinement, this this can really be a competitor. But for us in this iteration, uh, for me, the uh, the height is not a, a total disaster, but the uh, the gearing and neutral problem we think is too much of an issue for uh, if you're doing any sort of urban riding or commuting or I mean even adventure riding like if you can't put uh, you can't get the bike in a neutral and you have to stop on a peak or uh, you know you're stuck on the side of a mountain um, then you have serious problems um, that leads to the other actually slight minor issue which is that the length of the kickstand on Harley's is a little bit elongated because it um, it clicks in when you put the bike down to stop it rolling um, but if you're on an adventure bike and you the, the kickstand is sometimes much higher than the much lower than the, the where the ground sits and you have to lean the bike the other way to get it down and uh, this is a uh, another problem because sometimes you just have to resort to putting the kickstand down in first gear that cuts out the engine um, and then uh, you have to restart the bike and that messes with the sat nav so just these little things uh, they just really ruin what is overall a good a really good engine actually um, that's a lot of fun and uh, yeah but overall it's been reliable it's, uh, it's been pretty good it's got us from where we needed to be in some uh, some pretty uh, extreme conditions so well done Harley Davidson for the first attempt that is a wrap thank you
Recording. God. Like there was no goats. And then goats. Then goats. That was good emergency braking. Nice. Shepard's right behind you with his big stick, so... I think he was saying thanks for not killing my goats. Yeah, well, you know, it was not really about the goats, but... <laughs> <laughs>